You know, words from a dictionary are used all the time, so don't pretend you're the first person to ever say a word you found in a dictionary. And, you know, this was the first time anyone has ever said this word, because, you know, obviously, no. Like, you're not the first person to ever say, um, Jubusco, a violent squaw on the west coast of tropical and subtropical North America. Okay, maybe not, okay, maybe those aren't words people say all the time, but, uh, but my point still stands. So, um, what was my point? Oh, yeah, but sometimes words can be used as sentences never before spoken. But I guess that's how this movie came into fruition, because I had no idea until I did research how this movie came to be. But let's make sentences never before said come to life. When I saw it, I had no idea what to think about it. I mean, it's a Roger Rabbit Eskew Disney Plus exclusive movie about Chip and Dale from the, a Saturday morning late 80s cartoon I never saw, but apparently are actors of the same name in that show who in real life, and by you know, real life I mean um, in this movie, they have to reunite after decades apart to traverse the cartoon crime world, but I'm already getting ahead of myself, so you know, uh, let's talk about it more. So, in the late 80s, there was a Disney afternoon cartoon, not Saturday morning, I guess, about Chip and Dale, which most people I know who saw the trailer know way more from their shorts in Disney cartoons with more popular characters like Donald Duck or Pluto, but it's not like the original show matters. Uh, it's just a basis to make a new Roger Rabbit movie with Roger Rabbit just as a cameo, but more about this from me later. The movie is written by Dan Gregor and Doug Mann, but directed by one-third of The Lonely Island, Akiva Schaffer, with one-third of The Lonely Island as one of the two leads, because it apparently was going to be an in-universe movie before 2019, when the new writers suggested they make it a meta-film because reasons, and Akiva, loving animation, decided to get as many anime characters as possible because other reasons. As someone who didn't care about Chip and Dale's characters in general, I didn't care to see this in theaters, but it's Disney Plus exclusive, which made me worried since most Disney Plus movies I'd seen are garbage. And I'm sure there are good ones, but I'd seen Artemis Fowl, The Secret Society, Second More Royals, Sneakerella, and the Cheaper by the Dozens remake. So it's definitely has a low bar and low expectations from me. But I don't think I'm the only person who had no idea if this concept would work, and I can't believe I'm saying this. It works really, really, really well. To the point where it feels like it's a missed opportunity in many ways. Well, with that said, though, what's the movie about? So, starting off by giving the origins of how a young Chip, voiced by John Mulaney, met a young Dale, voiced by Andy Samberg, in a world where cartoons and humans coexist, where they grew up as best friends and would become an entertainment duo, where they would get small acting gigs at commercials or be an extra on Full House, but did eventually get their own show called Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, which they played characters of the same name who solve crimes. I think, or they are hired to rescue people, I have no idea, but that's shockingly not relevant. Uh, when Dale apparently tried to go for a solo career, leaving the show behind and getting cancelled, ruining both his and Chip's career, it leads into modern day where Chip's moved on from acting and lives a boring life as an insurance salesman, while Dale desperately tries to get his comeback, having gotten CGI surgery turning him 3D and showing up at conventions alongside other obscure characters. I'll go back to this later. As the two haven't spoken since, they split up. Now prepare yourself for an insane sentence I'm about to say. <gasps> okay, so they are brought back together when their friend and former co-star Monterey Jack, voiced for some reason by Eric Bana, gets kidnapped by the Valley Gang since he was in debt for his stinky cheese addiction. And if they don't rescue him in time, he's at risk at becoming bootlegged. Which in this universe is the cartoon equivalent of human trafficking. I guess. And they are turned into knockoff versions of themselves and shipped overseas to star in bootleg films in an operation run by an adult Peter Pan, voiced by Will Arnett. So Chip and Dale must save their friend before time runs out. What? What? So this idea is an awful. I mean, it sounds entertaining, and it is. I mean, that's what I got out of this movie, an entertaining film. That actually feels like a, what a modern-day Roger Rabbit movie would be like. So much so, for every time I keep seeing an article saying Roger Jemeckis is making a sequel, this is kind of what I think of, but ignoring that movie, no, actually not because of the main draw of that movie that wasn't as big as you might have thought from the ads, uh, except, uh, except for articles and how context YouTube videos, you'll certainly you'll see And by this point. Yeah, the number of cameos of non-Disney characters is what most people will talk about, probably. 
if it was amazing in the 80s to see Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny on the big screen together, you'll see a poster of a movie called E.D. vs. Batman with a clip of that movie following. The Alice Convention booth is next to the candle from Beauty and the Beast, a Marvel cartoon character I never heard of, and Ugly Sonic. Yeah, tons of people have already talked about this character by this point, but whatever. Ugly Sonic, voiced by Tim Robinson. Did they pay Paramount or Sega for the rights? There are plenty of original characters, like a police chief who's made out of clay, voiced by J.K. Simmons, a Muppet voiced by Keegan-Michael Key, a car from Cars, Seth Rogen plays a motion capture Viking, and even one pointless shot of Randy Marsh from South Park, because they thought it would be funny to have a South Park character in a kid's film, for no reason other than he's there. Ugh, my head hurts describing this. Why did they make this Disney Plus exclusive? They are probably losing a ton of money because of this, but what do I know? I mean, I said I wouldn't have gone to theaters to see this, but I, I don't know. This movie left me with more questions than answers. The story isn't terrible. I like seeing Chip, a cynical realist, and Dale, an optimistic goofball, act off each other. Which obviously this isn't the this isn't the hundredth time even a duel like this is on screen. But John Mulaney and Andy Samberg become these characters, uh, for lack of a better way to describe it, I guess. It never occurred to me. I mean, it did. So more like it didn't distract me that these celebrity voices didn't come out of classic Disney characters' mouth because they match perfectly the character and personality they are given. I really did like the characters in this movie, such as the crime boss Peter Pan, who I didn't know till looking it up. Apparently, this was based on the original kid actor Peter Pan, who grew up and did drugs, so I don't know if this is a right thing or a wrong thing in general to do, but Will Arnett voicing Peter Pan is hilarious. All the actors are good, or aren't distracting in any way, where you watch a kid's movie with celebrity voices, where you just hear celebrity voices and not the characters. There is a human character in the story, played by Kiki Lane, and she's not bad, but, but but her appearance did not match her personality, and honestly felt awkward around the cartoons. I mean, she's not a Bob Hoskins replacement, so that's not what they're going for. It's her own character, and I've seen her in other movies where I like her fine, and I like her fine here too, but I thought the character was the way she was for, on purpose to go with the story for other reasons. Oh yeah, the story. Uh, so, the story. I mean, I did like the sub in general, and the mystery itself was fun. I didn't fully know where it was going. I mean, they spoil a lot in the trailer, but it's like the original Roger Rabbit, where it's obvious who the bad guy is, but you enjoy the mystery of the plan, the mystery within itself. And here, I mean, the bad guy was so obvious, where I thought it would be too cliche, and it would be the other obvious person, but that's drawn to attention as well, so I was hoping it wasn't actual surprise, but it's not, and this movie is far from perfect, so I'll say that, because, <laughs> yeah, of course it's not perfect. So, here's my other problem. They don't take advantage of this concept, honestly. I was entertained from beginning to end. There are little to no bad jokes. The movie is hilarious, and I could see myself easily rewatching this. However, the movie could have been honestly spectacular. The CGI surgery as a parody of plastic surgery is a funny idea, but it could have been ran out and it wouldn't change anything. I think it could have been a good way of talking about how 2D animation is dying, but the services still exist, despite 3D being more popular, which comes with its own pros and cons, but that's never even teased that. Or the fact that a Disney film about a character who wants so desperately for his own show to be rebooted when Disney is rebooting everything else that doesn't need to be rebooted, I don't know, that's never talked about or even teased as a bad thing. Well, Who Framed Roger Rabbit wasn't as topical as the source material was based on. It's used, it, it used its role in characters as an analogy for racism or segregation. Sell enough for kids to not understand, but don't figure out in a clever way. And that's not here. But I shouldn't judge a movie for what I want it to be. I should judge it for what it is. The movie is really good. It's bonkers and hilarious in all the right ways. And sure, it could have been deeper, but the movie isn't perfect. It's entertaining and imaginative to see a modern world version of human character human characters and cartoon characters and the cameos all together and it is entertaining but that doesn't work all the time like it, the scene in the trailer where Pumbaa in the Lion King remake was also voiced by Seth Rogen last of the Seth Rogen Viking but it's joined by two characters from DreamWorks who he also voiced just so they could all do the Seth Rogen laugh but then Ugly Sonic becomes an actual character in the story where I feel bad this fictional character is treated as a joke granted I feel you know bad for the actual animators who designed it, but it did actually work into the story cleverly. Okay, maybe not cleverly, just well enough. The story itself is entertaining, I'll be a bonkers, but it works for a family film where the story itself is still predictable in many other ways, including them apparently repeating three different plot points of the show they themselves point out they are doing, but I didn't watch the show this is based on, and honestly, this could have been fictional characters too, like, I don't know, they could have had this whole movie be about, you know, in-character, um, 
Okay, original characters is what I mean, I guess. I, I still don't know. But there were sentences said in this movie that came to fruition, I can't believe. The human character talked about a busted case for a Nick Jr. character, and hearing that sentence be said straight makes me convinced some high wrote it. There are clever things about it. Missed opportunities, great voice acting, and chemistry from at least that elevate the characters. And honestly, more to rewatch than movies I like way more here. So, you know what? This is a winner for Disney+. Plus. I don't know how anyone thought this would actually work as well as it did, but I'm impressed from the variety of animation to the end result execution. Nothing like to say other than watch the movie if you saw the trailer and wonder what sentences would be invented to come out of this. I give Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers an 8 out of 10.